Hi. This presentation is all about standards-based learning. This isn't a new way of assessing, but does represent a shift in the way assessment information is shared out to our students and parents. During this presentation, we'll share the reasoning behind this shift, as well as help you better understand how emphasizing standards helps students to better focus on their learning. Now let's talk about some of the limitations with the more traditional percentage base grading and reporting systems. A recent online survey of roughly 400 students indicated that two-thirds of students work harder in schools because they are worried about their grades. Now at first this seem, seems like a good answer until that same group is asked if they would rather learn something useful or get an A in the class, which they overwhelmingly say get an A in the class. Alfie Cohen, author of The Schools Our Children Deserve, Moving Beyond Traditional Classrooms, writes extensively about the influences of grades on learning. With traditional grading systems, there are three consistent effects of leading students to focus on what grade they'll get. First, their interest in learning itself is diminished. They're more interested in what grade they'll get. How do I get my grade up? Second, Students come to prefer easier tasks, not because they're lazy, but, but because they're rational. After all, if the point is to get an A, your odds are better if you avoid taking intellectual risks. And if I do this assignment, my grade will go down. And third, students tend to think in a more superficial fashion and forget more quickly when grades are involved. With traditional grades, when an assignment is returned or a progress report is issued, an overall grade is given, which students use as a measure of where they are in their learning. However, a grade can't give students or parents the information needed to improve. An overall grade is ambiguous. It doesn't tell us what was understood and what wasn't. It doesn't tell us if an assignment was incomplete or if the students started off with challenges but overcame them as the term progressed. So let's now look at a different way of looking at student progress. Standards-based learning. Before we start, it's important first to define some of the language we teachers and school administrators use. A standard expresses what a student should know and be able to do in a subject area and grade level. ASD standards come from American Education Reaches Out, or ARO a U.S. State Department initiative that is aligned to curriculum in the U.S. that is known as the Common Core. The standards have been developed by subject area educators and ensure that our students are prepared academically. They are aligned, aligned with the elementary school and the high school and ensure academic preparation to university. It's important to point out that the middle school has been using standards and recording by standards for several years. The main difference now is that students and parents will get more specific information about how students are doing on the report card. There is a slight difference, too, between standards-based learning, assessment, and reporting. Standards-based learning deals with the curriculum and instruction. Standards-based assessment focuses on gathering valid evidence from students to verify what they have learned and are able to do. Standards-based reporting involves communicating summaries of that evidence to students, parents, and others. Parents certainly need to know how students are doing in school, and students benefit from understanding how they are performing, but how that progress is communicated can have a great impact on how a child learns. Standards-based learning brings into focus what students are learning. Learning is broken down into performance standards, which clearly outline the skills and concepts covered. Traditional grades may create a floor or lower boundary on what students can learn, but it also creates a ceiling or upper boundary beyond which most will not pass. If we want our students to be intellectually creative and rigorous, we need to provide opportunities for our students to go beyond, and standards-based learning can do this. With standards, we can look at the most consistent level of performance over time, emphasizing their most recent work where appropriate. If a student has been working on the same standard over time, building their skills, and then finally gets it, we should be able to re report out 
that they met the standard or have even gone beyond. We can focus on their learning. Here's an example of a language arts standard, highlighting the expectations for proficient performance. This is what all students at the grade level are expected to meet. This is a description of what it means to approach the language arts standard shown previously. The students can determine importance, but misses some important ideas. They're almost there, but need additional practice with the standard. This is approaching. Here's a look at the levels of proficiency side by side. Notice the limited proficiency, which states that with help, the student experiences some success with the standard. As mentioned earlier, traditional grades can place a ceiling or upper boundary beyond which most students can pass. With standards-based learning, we have a level of performance that allows students to go beyond what was taught in class. This empowers students to become more innovative and creative, allowing them to extend their learning. Here's a quick, quick look then at all four levels of proficiency listed together. Notice that the descriptor for advanced highlights how students can now determine importance in a text, even without text features, going beyond the grade level expectation. Let's take a look then at what a standards-based report looks like through PowerSchool. I'd like to draw your attention first to this area called category scores. Subject courses have been broken down into strands, which are really just groupings of the standards for a particular subject. You can see here that language arts has four strands listed. Whenever the teacher grades an assignment, that assignment is broken down into standards. These standards are then rolled up into the strands, giving you an overall level of progress in that particular standard area. Below the strands, we have our learning habits which communicate out information how students participate, demonstrate responsibility, engagement, respect, and effort. They're not currently listed here, but this is where they will go. Next we have the listing of assignments. Notice that there isn't an overall grade for the assignments. They are broken down by the standard that is being measured, or standards that are being measured. These are the standards that get rolled up into the strands above. Notice as well the levels of performance listed for each standard. Advanced, proficient, approaching proficiency, and limited proficiency. The descriptors for each level can be seen by clicking the score descriptor at the top. These levels are also listed for each strand. We also have a section for missing work. If a student misses an assignment, it gets populated up here, so they have a quick reference to what still needs to get finished. So to summarize the differences between the traditional method of grading versus the standard method, I'd like to use this image of a graduated cylinder. The traditional method is really a snapshot of learning. It will give you an overall level, but not much else. The standard view is more like a photo album. It will break down learning into specific standard areas addressed over time, giving students and parents more information about where both strengths and areas of challenge lie. Before we conclude, I'd like to briefly show you how the reporting out on standards in the elementary looks, as it helps to illustrate the continuity of their work into the middle school. Notice that we use the same levels of performance descriptors and that the elementary, like middle school, separate out their learning behaviors from academic performance. This next page of the elementary report card shows you how each subject is broken down into more specific and detailed areas, allowing both students and parents to focus in on areas of strength and areas of challenge. 
In this example, we have language arts, which is broken down into reading, research, writing, listening and speaking, and media literacy. And again, each of those areas are broken further down into specific, specific pieces of information for parents to zoom in on. When we look at the changes in the way we report out student progress, it may be tempting to want to describe this as a new way of grading and reporting. However, this is not the case. Looking at this table, we can see that there are many elements that will remain the same. We will still inform students and parents about the overall level of progress a student is making. We will continue to provide written comments about student progress. We will continue to separate learning habits from academic performance. We will continue to assess against our standard criteria, and we will continue to report on missing and light work. What is different is that now we will use a letter grade to communicate overall progress, which is a summary, really, of the student evidence collected. We will add strands to break down each subject into categories of knowledge. We will grade work by the standard addressed, not the overall assignment, and we will use levels of proficiency to indicate student performance. So what are the benefits? By now I hope they're clear. There is much greater detail that is available to both students and parents when we look at standards. The feedback is of greater use. We can zoom in on specific areas. And we have a focus on learning and clearer directions for moving forward. Instead of a 78% in science, which gives students and parents little information about a student's capabilities, you would instead receive an assessment score based on specific criteria or standards and benchmarks. If a student is informed that his or her performance for a standard does not meet the criteria, that student will have been guided to the area in which they need to pay particular attention for that subject. That concludes this presentation. Please, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us here at school. We'd be happy to discuss this further with you.